Let's have a look at them then. Come and have a look. Like to borrow some glasses? Ooh, yeah. Nice. Can I have a look at the others? Yeah, of course you can. I just can't remember the other ones. No. It's so weird. Good, because they're all the same. I'll <laughs> <laughs> have to look at some of the skies a bit, I think, because they're not... Yeah, they sort of want to be... Yeah, it needs a bit of colour in them. But... Yeah, they're good when they've got all that round. Yeah. You know, the idea that Dinos works on these things and I work on other things, in some senses we're agreeing to the idea that the, the, one of the things that motivates the work are the differences. Um, and given, given the parameters of what we're doing, there isn't really much scope for it being wrong in such clear-cut ways. But also, because I, I guess everything, everything takes so much time, there's so many points at which it's going to... you're going to know that it's going the wrong way. Yeah, so. but, but also the work we make, I mean, is the, the interchangeability of the work, of the, of the techniques, of the abilities to do stuff is nothing to do with the signature of an identity of a person. I mean, the work is not really about our identity. So the idea that actually we can make separate work under the sort of the guise of, a, of, of, of one artistic agency is, is, is really what the work's about. <laughs> Eating their own eyes. That's the one I think I've done before. No. No? no. You haven't seen that one before? No. Oh, good. No, I don't think so. Nice, good. Very good. Growing up in Hastings was, was idyllic. It was always sunny. Um, the sea was always warm, and the ice cream was delicious. No, it was it was it was bleak. It was fairly kind of rough. But then I, I guess it, it is when you're a kid anywhere. You know, it's like a like a like a PlayStation game, really. Avoid the psychiatrics. Don't get raped. Don't get beaten up, and don't drown. So it was fun. So, uh, that, yeah, all, all the things in bubble wrap. Right. I'll grab that bag. So these are some yeah. mannequins and uh, s there's some severed feet in there and uh, various bits and bobs, glue sticks, essential repair kits, makeup. Extra blood. This. No, that. Yeah, well. That's a painting. Apparently, he's quite famous. Not so much for painting, though. But. Let's go take these in. to put a tent up. <laughs> it's uh, an homage to Tracy Emin. It's um, a sculpture called The Same Thing, Only Better. Um, because she felt like she couldn't remake the sculpture, her iconic sculpture that was burned in the fire in Mo the Momart fire we, we thought would make it for her. 
Does she know about it? I think she does know about it, yeah. This is the first time this sculpture is going to be shown, so it'll be interesting to see how it, how it um, goes down in, in Tracy land. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I Sorry, I just saw... <laughs> I saw an opening. I mean, it's quite interesting that the reason that she couldn't remake it was because she was so emotionally uh, connected to the, to the work that it would make the remake unspontaneous and therefore negate the emotional content of the work. And I think that what we were interested in doing was actually remaking all of the destroyed work as a way of... Uh, I guess negating the work, really. Um, but I think we ran out of steam after doing Tracy's tent, so we didn't really fancy doing the, the, the I mean, the Damien's and the Gillian Ayres and the, all the other stuff. It's a, it's a one-person tent, and so far it's taken five of us to put it up. <laughs> I mean, the, the title is the same thing, only better. It's, a, it's a, an obvious... obvious uh, misnomer really I mean because it is a, it's not the same thing and it can't be better <laughs> because it's only a duplication of something okay cool good done lovely loveliness the idea of something's importance being um, elevated because it doesn't exist anymore and the implications of, of remaking that thing is almost an affront to the idea of, of the, the, the creative principle you know um, that this is the, this is a complete completely uh, a, a, an accurate copy, and yet it's disinvested of any of the metaphysics or the, the poetic content of the original. So, it, you know, it occupies exactly the same space and time, but it, it's devoid of any kind of content. I think that's a, a preoccupation that we have with all of our work. Originally, these paintings would have been got from um, just local junk shops. And of course, nobody wants an old picture of a stranger. Um, so they don't even get picked up from the junk shops. And then we find them and, <clears throat> and bring them back to kind of life, but not in a way they particularly want to be. I think the best, the best paintings are the most damaged ones from kind of the back of sort of cardboard boxes that have been in junk shops for years and years and years. Um, but I think the, the problem was that the kind of every time I went back to the same junk shops, the, the paintings got more and more pricey and less and less damaged. So it's kind of um, uh, eventually we started sourcing them from auctions. I think this 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 one over here, this painting over here, I think I think it's Handel, but this this is one that wasn't this, this didn't come from a junk shop. This is one of the more sort of legitimate paintings, but um, I, think it, I, I think it is. I guess, I guess, I mean, most of the paintings aren't very good. So, um, I, I, I don't know, I imagine every town had like its jobbing art, uh, portrait artists who kind of more or less could kind of carry a likeness. Um, so they're kind of, they're not, they're not, I mean, they're not very good paintings mainly. There you go. Das um, Turnipun und Cherries by Angela Hitler. And where is this going to go? Dana? It's going to go over here in the back here so that only children can come and see it. It'll go there. How about that? This way or the other way around? <laughs> we put in a hole because she's been complaining of pressure. It's kind of, um, she's going to be standing around for a long time, so it's kind of 
It's what they used to do in caveman times, without a drill. But no, it's got to put the radio in there. These. I think sometimes because we work as brothers, I think this, the sibling thing is, is kind of like a red herring in terms of the, the, the effect that it has in the expectation of the yeah. work. And the point is, is that the conversation that we have about, about the work is more associated with more of, of the philosophical conditions of representation and speculating on, on the experimental side of making art rather than you know, whether we liked our childhood or not. You're listening to Today on BBC Radio 4 with Michelle Hussein and James Nochty. The brothers Jake and Dinos Chapman became known as the Enfant Terrible, or the brothers grim of the British art scene during the 1990s. Now they've created a show that is being called Their Biggest Baddest Yet, and it opens this week in Hastings, which is where the brothers grew up. And one of them, Jake Chapman, is on the line. What are people going to see then in the exhibition? I think they're going to see lots of, um, lots of art, lots of wonderful art that we've made with our own fair hands. Including, including the design to shock kind of artwork that people might know you for in, in the past, the kind of thing that went into the sensation exhibition? I mean, I don't, I don't find it shocking. I think it's, I think it's shocking that people find it shocking. Even the, the... Just to pick out one piece, I mean, the, the, the mannequins of children joined together, penises instead of noses, I mean, you... Are you saying you didn't do that with a, with a desire to shock, to stop people in their tracks? I was explicitly told I couldn't say the word penis this early. I can't believe you said it before <laughs> me. But, um, um, On my head be it then. It's quite shocking. <laughs> I've been trying to kind of tattoo people for a long time, and every time we try and do it, someone tells us we're not allowed to. So we have to rely on other people doing it. It's got a cock, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> Misrepresentation and misunderstanding are fully possible uh, um, explanations of the work, and so they are appropriate. You know, we don't we don't see a delineation between the production of the work and the passive. Uh, reception of an interpretation. That we, our, our, our activity is, is active at all levels. We're active in terms of producing work and active in terms of responding to the critical responses to the work. So the critical responses become part of the next way of, of challenging or attacking the same content. I don't know, really. I think we've got some nice reviews, which is always nice. You know, nice to have nice reviews. Did a good uh, radio interview, mentioned the word penis on, on air, which is good. I mean, I didn't start it, well, that's even better. It's a nice turnout. It's very difficult to kind of, you know, do, to do all this stuff and then have to stand there and sort of describe it. And, you know, it's like I, sometimes I think I wouldn't bother making it if I could describe it. The best bit is making the work and then it's all downhill from then.